Today we're going to be creating a marble game in which you will have to roll to your objective. So as always, starting with an empty project and one texture, which is the texture that we're going to use for the wall. But let's start with that. Once we create the 3D scene, we can start adding all the nodes that we want. For the level, I'm going to be using the nodes which are here in Visual Instance, Geometry Instance, CSG Shape, and Primitives. These are all shapes that you can use in your projects to make 3D things as a mock-up for your levels. It's not meant to be used for the final thing, but for making small game jam stuff should be enough. The nice thing about this is that you can combine them and you can use them to create other complicated shapes just in case that you need some extra flexibility without opening an external 3D program or anything like that. So let's go with a box. Box is what we're going to use for the tables where the ball sits and everything. So let's create one. As you can see here, you have just the block, nothing really complicated. And on these points that you see here, one on the top, one on the left, one on the right, you can drag and drop it and you modify how the shape looks. So if you do it like this, it goes wider, then thinner, then longer. So you can start using these elements to create your level. One cool thing about the editor is that you can move freely by pressing the right click on the 3D scene and using the WASD keys. So it's like an FPS game where you can move and the camera moves with you. And if you feel like this is very slow, you can also use the scroll wheel and your movement is going to be so much faster in this 3D space. So this is really useful whenever you are like previewing or doing some level editors like you can navigate freely around your scene. Now that we have this plane, let's create our character, in this case the marble that will fall down until it reaches the objective. So since we want the marble to have some physics and everything, we're going to use another kind of node, which is here in spatial, collision object, physics object, rigid body. This will be our marble and when you create it, it's empty, there's nothing in it because the information of what collides and everything, you have to add it afterwards. Let's hide this box for a minute. And as we had it on previous episodes, if you've been following or doing any 2D tutorials, like 3D in Godot works really similar to that. So in the same way that whenever you add a kinematic body, you need to add a collision shape and a sprite. Here you have to do the same. You have to add a collision shape and a sprite. In this case, since they are not sprites, although you can use one, you do a, a 3D model. So in this point that we have here, let's, let's add a child node, which will be the collision. In this case, collision shape, we create it. And on this shape, we should we choose shape, new sphere shape. This will give us a sphere, which will be the collision of this object. You can make it bigger or smaller, the same way as the other node like so, but we want it to the default size, we're not modifying anything right now. And now we want a representation, because if we play the game, like nothing is really there. So we need to add a sphere. Going to the same nodes, we can search them easier by typing here, CSG sphere. And we have a sphere here. It's very blocky, it's not really appealing, but you can modify its properties here. So if we want to add more radial segments and more rings, the ball will get smoother and smoother. You can go nuts with this one to make it really smooth or not. Another alternative, if you don't want to use this kind of boxes, is I'm going to remove this one. And instead of doing the C CSG box, let's add a mesh. So here we can search for mesh. And here in Mesh Instance, we do almost the same as with the collision shape. We select here a sphere, and we get our sphere here. It's much smoother, I think, as per our defaults, so I'm going to stick with this one for now. Let's make sure that we don't modify anything. Let's press on this button, and we close it. So we have our player here. Now let's display, again, the table that we had before, and move the ball on top so that when we play the game, the ball will fall on that. There's one thing we have to do. I want it to fail first, so you see why. Now let's add the camera. Camera. This is how the player will see your scene whenever you press play. 
and you can move it like any other object here using those arrows or the circles around any of those 3D objects makes, makes it rotate so you can rotate the camera. You see that square is where you are looking at. And if you're confused about what the camera is actually looking at, you can use here on the editor pressing on preview and you can see what the camera will see. This button will show up whenever you have that node selected. So if I don't have that node selected, you don't see it, but make sure that you can select it, press preview and you see it. So let's move this into a place there and let's press preview. This looks okay. Let's play play now and let's see what happens with our game. Of course, we save it as main and play. So the ball falls and that was the error that I was talking about because although we added collisions to this uh, rigid body, we didn't add any collision to the box. And since you are going to be creating complicated things with this one, there is an alternative way. Instead of having a collision shape, you can here press use collision on this inspector option. And it will collide with everything they have on this layer. In this case, both are on the same layer. If you see here, layer one. Okay. So it should collide. No problem. Okay. We see the ball. It falls there. Let's create some elements to make it look a little bit closer to what the game will be, just to try things out and continue with the visual aspect later. So let's move the camera a little bit behind. Okay. This first, I'm going to make it a little bit steeper. So the ball, whenever it starts, it goes. And I'm going to make it longer so we can move it much more than. Okay. Let me move it here. Now, whenever this goes there, I'm going to duplicate this one, control T, and I'm going to create another one. And let's make it so that this one is, let's see, on the opposite side, like so. So the ball will fall over there. It will do like this. And so let's try it out. You see the ball falling, reaches the other side, it goes a little bit up, and then it falls down. Okay. So let's now create the level. Let's make it so that you first start falling on this one. Then you have this one to bounce. And okay. I'm gonna select everything. Here I can do it like so. I should select everything. I can move it on top so I'm not under the grid. Okay. And I'm gonna duplicate this one and move it to the other side so we can reach the end. Okay. Kind of like this. So the ball will go here, all the way there, and then you have to move there. And at the end, we're going to have this ashtray kind of thing where you can finally leave your marble there. And that means that you win. Maybe let's make this a little bit smoother. Okay. So it's not that tooth, tooth if you know what I mean. Okay. So let's start creating complicated shapes with these boxes. I'm going to create one, which is going to be the same, a box. We'll have it at zero. Let's go there and make it a bit bigger. And now, since I want to add a hole on it, I'm going to create inside of this one a sphere, CSG sphere. This sphere now, it's inside of the other one. like. They are basically the same kind of material and everything. Like it looks like it merges. But here on the node options, there are different operations. Union, which make them together. Intersect and subtract. Subtract will do a hole in this other shape. So for instance, now we see that the ball is carving a hole inside of that other structure. So in this case, we want it to be a little bit, maybe bigger, yeah? Move it a little bit on top and make the box a little bit taller. 
and let's put this here so it's not okay and then clicking outside okay so here we have the hole on this square let's move it a little bit on top so we don't see the grid okay and here we have it this structure for now is going to be where the ball is going to fall you can use these kind of combinations to do anything and if you want the opposite right now we're using the operation subtraction but if you want the opposite you can use intersection so it will only draw whatever is intersecting between those two if you work with vector graphics this will be very intuitive for you and if not just try it out combine some shapes add subtract and you will understand it pretty quickly okay so we have here our goal our end goal and let's place it where we want it which is there at the end so i'm going to select it and move it there let's see okay okay we have it there it's going to be kind of easy to get but it's okay for a test level we have now the basics of our level and let's start adding some of the interactions because if i press play you're going to notice that the camera is not moving you cannot do anything with the ball so it will just fall and nothing will happen so let's start setting up the camera in a proper angle that we want if you want to preview the camera and move it at the same time if you press here on view you can split the viewport in two and now that we have two i can use this one for previewing the camera and this one for editing the game so in this case let's move this a little bit top and this is the angle that i want maybe a little bit further okay something like this seems okay and we can remove this view now okay i'm gonna go ahead and, and create a script for our camera which we'll call camera.gd we will want to update the position of the camera to be following the ball so let's first get the distance from the camera to the ball and then update that same distance all the time so we're going to the offset and we also want to have a reference to our ball so on ready bar ball with capital letters is going to be get parent and get node reject body so this line of code here is going to be accessing and saving this reference so we can use later on ready let's set the offset for the first time so the offset is going to be the translation translation is when you click on any of these objects here in transform the translation is the position so if you move it you see that those num numbers are going to move um, so that's what we want to get that's the same as position in 2d so we want to get this which is a vector 3 and let's subtract the ball translation okay so now we know the, the offset that we have to respect on every stop now on func physics process translation is equal to ball translation plus offset so in this way every step is gonna check the position is gonna set the offset that we calculated at the beginning like the distance that there is between those two and it's gonna move the camera at the same time let's try it out and the camera is following our ball and it falls okay so now we have to start adding the code to our ball so we can move it a little bit to the sides so let's attach a script it's gonna call it ball and let's declare a variable that is called movement speed and set it to 0 0.05 something really small and then we can modify it if we want to and in the func process let's start with the user input if input is action pressed 
I'm going to use the default ones, which are the arrow keys. On every empty code operate, you have this, but you can modify and create your own. So let's start with UI left. Pass so I don't get the error. And let's copy this. And UI right for the other one. Okay. And now we can apply central impulse. Central impulse will make that this node suddenly has from the center like some impulse that makes it move magically. You're not rotating anything, you're just adding like some invisible force. But since the ball is gonna be rotating, we're gonna see it rotate wherever we want it. Apply central impulse. Let's create a vector three. In this case, X is going to be movement speed, the variable that we created, and the rest is gonna stay as zero. And same is gonna happen in the other step, Instead of adding positive movement speed, we're going to subtract the movement speed. Let's try it out and see how it feels. If we can move, you can press in left, right. Okay, I, I, made, I made this on the other opposite side. Okay, so this one has to be the negative and this one has to be the positive. My bad. Let's see. Okay, yes, I can move the ball. Now I can stop and here it goes. And I think I forgot to add a collision there. Yes, I forgot. Okay. <laughs> Let's add use collision. And I think that you can clear the level now. So let's try it out again. Okay. And it goes there. Okay. Success. We have our first level working. Let's now make this look a little bit better. Um, let's add some extras. First of all, if we add a texture to our ball, we're going to see it rotating better. So let's start creating a material for that. We get a close up here. We select a rigid body. And remember that the mesh instance is what we're actually seeing. And here on material, we don't have anything. Let's add a new spatial material. You see this new resource appears. And when you click it, you get all the options. Here you have a preview and the one thing that we're going to be using on this tutorial for now is the albedo, which is the color or a texture. In this case, if you modify the color, you will see that the ball changes the color to whatever you pick. But in this case, we can leave it on white and add this texture that we have here. It can be whatever you like. I like this one for this marble because it looks kind of okay. And when you add it, you see that we have here our texture applied on the ball. Now, when we play the game, you see it actually rotating. It's now more clear because before it was white, you, you couldn't tell the difference. Now I want also to have that glossy effect. So let's modify this and add roughness. Let's move it lower, 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 lower. So you see that it's kind of glowing. The roughness basically means how a material is. So if it's really smooth, it reflects, you will see here that it has, it has kind of this glossy, so it looks kind of nice. Another thing that I see in a lot of these tutorials is that you see those sharp edges that you have around the object, and especially when you're playing the game, like you can see them, those lines, I don't really like them. So I'm gonna go here on the project settings and on the rendering quality. You can add the MSAA, which if you played any game, you know what this is. You set it to 4X, for instance, and every of those edges is going to be super sharp. If you see here now, you can see it even in the editor. This makes it look so much better. And since we don't really know exactly where we are, and if we start creating complicated levels, we need to have a better reference. Let's add some lighting. So let's add a node and in spatial visual instance, light, directional light. So you have these three kinds of lights. They have a very good description at the bottom. Uh, so this is basically a sun. This is basically uh, a light that you have in a point, which is like a circle. And this is a spotlight, which points to something if you want to have it just like a spotlight. Uh, but we want just to have a, a sun. 
and whenever you create it, you can see the difference between those. I don't know if I can toggle. Yeah, if you toggle, you see that everything gets illuminated. And this fake sand that you add, you can set the direction by the rotation of it. So if we want to have the sun having from one side, pointing from one side, you see this white arrow over there, you can rotate it and you see how it moves. Let's do it at an angle and also a little bit looking down. Okay. Kind of like that. I think that this position doesn't matter. The only one that matters is the position of the arrow because the light is going to be global. It's going to be affecting everything. Another thing that we would like to add is in this directional light, you can enable shadows. So you press here on shadow. Whenever you have this node selected, you enable it. And you see here that you, the elements cast shadows to the other ones. And this makes it look really good. Let's make the sun go from the top. So, okay. So we can see the marble light. Let's see how the game looks like right now. Okay starting to look much better okay yeah you can also do the same to these platforms that we created here if you select one you can create different mat different materials for them so let's go ahead and create a new spatial material and only change the color with i'll build a, I don't know, let's make it something like light green something like this and if you want to reuse a material to different objects I recommend you to save the resource so I will save it as green material and you even get this preview here which is really cute I like it that whenever you have a lot of those you can set it and let's select the other ones so this one and here in material I can drag and drop so you set the material and here you set it and on this one we're gonna leave it at white because I feel it's a better end goal. Okay, th this is starting to look like a game. I, I really like it. Another thing that you can change is the sky. This is the default sky. And if you don't know exactly where to modify it, you have to do it on this resource that you have right here, which is the default env, default environment. You can make an image like an um, FPS, you know, you have those images of the sky, like a sky box, uh, things like that. Or you can create a procedural sky, which is the one that is created here on this default resource by setting the sky, ground, sun, texture, whatever. Since this is really colorful, let's add some, some nice colors. Let's see, some pink on the sky always looks nice. The horizon, let's see, I don't know, maybe some green to make it more cool, futuristic, kind of surreal. <laughs> and oops. And for the bottom color, let's go with that dark purple. Purple, let's see. Okay. And horizon color, let's go with something like a red. Ooh. Okay. So let's make it a bit more a bit darker. Okay, let's play the game. Let's see how it looks like. I wanna, I wanna feel how it looks here. Okay, much better. Okay, here we move it. The level is super easy for now, but yeah. Okay. Now that we have a cool sky, a cool level, I'm gonna cover the last thing that you might need in a small game, which is checking whether an object is inside another one. If you follow the other tutorials in my channel, you already know how to do this. And if you've been seeing how easy everything here is, it's because it's really super simple to create things in 3D in Godot. It's basically the same as you do it in 2D, but you add an extra dimension, which is the C, but the rest is pretty much the same. In this case, we're gonna be using an area and checking if something is inside that area or not the same as in the box tutorials. So we want to check on this node. So let's create a new child node, which is going to be collision object area. We have it here and as any other area, you need a collision shape. So let's add a collision shape inside of it. And this collision shape is gonna be 
a box shape. This rectangle that you see there, this box, is how big it is. So the same as before, we use those sliders to make it bigger and let's make it a bit taller. Okay. And it has some signals. So the area has the body entered and let's create now a master script for our game as we always do. And let's link that whenever in this, let's rename this to end this area when a body enters, let's connect it to the game. Let's add our rigid body, our player there, our ball. Let's add it to a group. So here in groups, let's add ball. So we don't have to check for that instance and you can create as many marbles as you want. There's a very popular Twitch game which consists in a lot of marbles going through a level, which you can create a clone of that with all this knowledge. Like you don't really need that much for the physics stuff. If you want to do multiplayer, that's another story. Okay, uh, so now that we connected this on the game, we check for if body is in group ball. I don't remember if it was capitals or not. Yes, it was capital letters. Okay. Print U1. So you can replace this with a dialogue, with a menu, going to the next level, with whatever you like. Since I've covered that several times on my channel, I'm not going to create the entire thing. Uh, so let's try it now that on the terminal there at the bottom, it says U1. Let's see. Speed running this already. Okay, here you won. You see there the message whenever we reach that area. I don't like that it's doing that thing with the camera that it it's overlapping. So let's modify this one. Maybe the last thing that you would like to know is that if you want to add some text elements or something control node related, you can create a canvas layer, which is going to make a new screen. And inside that canvas layer, you can add control nodes. And here you can do the same as you did in any other tutorial. Here, let's create a label which says, hello from a control node. And if you see here the, the size of the screen on your canvas layer, it will show up on top of your 3D game. There we have it at the top. So if you want to add a thank you, congratulations for finishing my level and trying this game, whatever, you can do it there. Okay, so that covers all the basics. Now I want to try and make this level a little bit more interesting. I'm going to do like a time lapse of me editing this level and see how we can use these kind of basic shapes to create some interesting levels. Okay, so I've been playing with the editor a little bit. I created this level, which basically makes the ball go at the beginning. You have to move on the side. This basically is like a tutorial for the game. If you don't press anything, you will lose. But if you start moving, you will notice that you can move. That way you see that the speed goes there and goes very fast. And then when you get to this curve, which is actually a bit longer than I wanted, then you get to this part, which you have to use these columns to make the ball go slower because otherwise you will go super fast and you will miss your target. So this is something really busy you have to do, but I noticed a few extras that I want to cover here. First of all, the camera is not rendering all the distance. So if you see here on the preview, we cannot see the end of the level. And since we don't have a lot of things on the screen, let's make here on the far, let's make it longer. Okay, so now, this will show how much you see on the camera. In this case, we want to show all the level. Another thing is that I want to give the move, the movement 
a little bit more impact. So I'm going to rotate the camera a little bit. So that makes you feel like your ball is rotating. So let's go to the rigid body. And here, let's get the reference. As we did before with the camera to get this, let's get the camera from this one. So cam is going to be get parent, get node camera. So we should over the bar, sorry, okay. So okay, we, we should get the camera over there. And let's rotate it. We want to rotate it in the Y angle. So camera rotate Y. And this has to be super, super small. I don't want it to be super strong. So let's go with zero, zero, one. And the same on the other side, but as always to the opposite direction. Let's see if it's like this or not. I'm confused now. Okay. And I move left. Okay. Yeah, this adds more dynamism to the ball moving. Okay. Now you can feel that you're rotating the camera. Ooh, maybe it's even a, a, a bit too much. Let's make it rotate a little bit less. Let's go with zero five. Okay. Yeah, this is more closer to what I feel that I'm pressing on the screen. Okay, let's follow. Whoa. Okay, now that we modified that, you can go to your pole and maybe you want to make it go faster. Let's see, the gravity scale here is one. Let's go, I don't know, let's try with three because this will make it the, the ball much faster. So it's going to be harder, you see? But it's, I think it's more realistic than the other one. The other one was super slow. Yeah, now this is a challenge. Let's see how it reacts when I collide. Okay, oof, almost fall. Okay, yeah, this one is much harder. So you can tune these values here, the gravity, the weight of the object and anything. And as before, you can keep creating some levels and hope that this is useful for you to create any game on a game jam. You can use these same principles to make a puzzle game or or even the, the same game that we did before with the box you can with the box pushing you can do it here in 3d um, and as you can see it's really really simple like Godot makes it really simple for you to to create 3d games in no time so that's it for today and it was a lot to cover i hope i was able to make it as short as possible because i don't want to make things too complicated but I hope you enjoy it and I really want to thank my Patreons and all your support. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe, leave a like. It helps the channel a lot. And see you guys next time. I will probably go back to one of the previous series and more updates on the dialogue system are coming soon. So thank you very much again, everyone, for staying here and see you guys next time. Bye.